Well, hello and welcome to another Dino's Diary. Today we are deep in the heart of the Cambridgeshire Fens and we are after what I consider to be the holy grail of midsummer fishing, which is wild rudd. Um, they go to well over two pound in this stretch. I've had them to two pound 10 in the past, which in my opinion is, it's an amazing fish, um, but you don't get many opportunities. We're gonna be covering an awful lot of ground um, there's lots of small fish in here, which we will have to deal with. And to be fair, I've already had probably an hour, maybe 90 minutes this morning, just getting my eye in, because a lot of the cast is to the far bank. Um, the wind is a pain in the backside sometimes. And to be fair, sight fishing for them, which is exactly what we're gonna be doing today. We might make the odd blind cast here and there, but really, I wanna be seeing them bigger fish. I wanna be leading them by a couple of foot. I wanna be putting a single look bait in front of them. And I want them to come up and absolutely snuffle it. Um, whether it happens or not, I don't know, but the target is a two pounder and I will not stop until I get one. Oh, he just turned on it. Got it, there he is. Tuck the lump of bread, let it by about, I don't know, three feet, and look at the color of that. Gonna give myself a pound all day long for that. Absolutely superb fish. Look at the color of it. If I could draw a rud, that would be exactly how it looked. Thank you, darling. So let's talk a little bit about rigs because it's actually quite simple. Most of this fishing is about your eyes, spotting the fish and your feet, getting you around as much water so you can actually find the bigger ones. Um, I've gone for an 11 foot eventless rod. Now, if the fish start diving around in the inside margins, I've got an extra long landing net pole to help me deal with those situations. A 13 foot rod in them situations would be slightly more effective. However, it makes it harder to most importantly get the bait where you need to, which is real tight to the far bank, where I particularly find that most of the bigger fish want to feed. If you see them in open water, you can have a go, but really they're ever so spooky when they're there. So an 11 foot Aventus float rod is absolutely perfect for me for the job. Soft in the tip, but plenty of backbone just in case you do look a big and it tries to bore for the far bank. Um, down to four pound pure, and then sandwiched between three line stops, I've got the pellet waggler adapter and the smallest foam waggler that I can get away with. Now these are absolutely perfect in combination with each other because they're designed so that they don't actually dive down too deep. You should feather them in anyway to kick the hook link out, but most importantly to create that tiny little sexy slap on the surface, but they do not dive down more than a couple of inches at the very max. And that's important in this situation because if you do have a float that goes boof and then has to wait to come back up, the fish are long gone. From there, I've got about 15 inches of 011 N gauge down to a size 14 MWGB. Now it's quite a big hook, but I did start off with a 16 with small baits and the smaller fish became a very big problem. Um, so I've gone up a size of hook just so I can carry a slightly bigger piece of bread out there, which is my hook bait of choice for this session. And that's it really. I'm trying to find them. I'm trying to feed them. I'm trying to catch them. Well, even the small ones are getting bigger. Look at that. Still a decent handful, and on a commercial, you wouldn't think twice, would you? But walking up and down this beautiful little drain, that is a wonderful bit of sport. And I could do this all day long. I know we're after a two pounder, <laughs> but that's still cracking. Thank you very much. I'm gonna need them by a couple of feet. There you go, boom. Boom, they're moving. They're right next to it. Oh, small ones at it. <gasps> Do you know what? It's lovely to see the small rudd in the drain. It, it bodes well for the future, but if one more of them takes my bait in front of them big ones, I'm gonna pull the rest of my air out. It's been so frustrating today. And there was probably three fish there that were what we were after. And for that one to literally just come up, nick it off their nose and, and then to spook the shoal, but then, whilst I was so depressed standing in the rushes to see one lone big one sitting in the rushes right over in a tiny little gap on the far side, to flick it over, the perfect cast if I'm absolutely honest, and don't get me wrong, I'm not 
pat myself on the back too much. I've duffed a few up today. Um, Got him. Got but him. it just came out and sucked it straight off the top of that lily pad. That was absolutely perfect. It's exactly why I come up here. Get your net, Dino, come on. The bait was on a leaf. And the fish, oh, Jesus. Ooh. And the fish came up and sucked it off of the leaf. Where are you? There he is. <laughs> 10 seconds ago, I was a disappointed man. Right now, I want to scream for the hills. <laughs> well, look at that. One pound seven bar of gold. Blood red fins and from the brink of defeat, absolutely devastated. A one chuck wonder, right tight over to the far bank in a tiny little gap. And this bad boy or girl come and suck the hook bait pretty much clean off the top of a lily pad. You know, I'm far from an expert up here on the fence. I've only been here probably five or six times in five or six years. So I'm sort of learning on the job in front of the camera, which is reasonably difficult to be fair. But what I'm definitely going to take away from this trip is that the fish that ain't moving too far, the ones that are just circling or that are sunning themselves out in open water, by all means, you might be out to mug one, but those ones tend to be the ones that are ever so spooky and difficult to actually get a bait on because they're not moving on to anything. The fish that you do see, either far bank or near bank, that are moving from one place to another. They're not spooked, they haven't seen you, but they're definitely going somewhere and they're going somewhere at a reasonable speed. Those ones you can lead by four to six foot and they seem to be the ones that want to snatch at the bait. And every time I've seen a fish like that and had the cast that has presented the bait in the right way, I've hooked those fish. So fish for moving fish, because those ones definitely seem to be much more up for it. But if you do see them in open water, hey, we're anglers. You've got to have a go because you might just mug one. Oh, booty time. Booty time. He's in the net. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Oh man, that is why I bring a big pack of Claritin because I know I'm just going to get stung to bits. <laughs> oh, they're itching. Oh, I've got a booty up to my shin. Got another big rud in the net. Well, I thought the weather had beaten us. The wind picked up, the cloud came over and quite frankly, we put the net, the mat, the rods and everything in the car. And I was just driving off. I had my head out the van window and I saw a shoal of about six or seven, just like I have done probably a dozen times today. And I slammed the brakes and I said to Rimmer, the cameraman, come on one last go while the sun's out. And it's gone off, one pound 12, biggest one of the day. Absolutely awesome. Not that before this fish I felt it was a failure, but you know, you always drive away from sessions like this thinking about what could have been and really what could have been would probably have been about three, two pounders. But at the end of the day, they're wild fish. They get to that size because they're ever so spooky. And the small ones have done us in today, but at the end of the day, I do love hunting them and I do love wild venues like this. And I do love exercise. And trust me, I've had plenty of exercise today. And that is an absolute payoff. Got it. Do you know, this style of fishing is probably up there amongst the most frustrating you'll ever do. There's so many times one little thing goes wrong, the dividing line between success and failure is so fine, but you do it because you'll foul 10, 11, 12 times on the bounce. I don't know, it can easily be that amount, but you're doing it for that one moment when the perfect cast goes in, the wind drops, the sun's at a perfect level so you can just see the fish swimming onto the bait. It sucks it in and everything goes right, you know? It may only happen once a session, it may only happen once every couple of sessions, but when it does, all of those frustrating moments they just disappear. That's why I come up here to do this style of fishing. God, you do have to lead them by quite some way. Oh, God. I think it's quite a good fish, to be fair. Well, you are not going to believe it. We got another 200 yards down the path. 
I saw some fish. I know roughly where they are now, to be fair, because we've located them through the day. And where my target was two pound, this is 115 and a half. <laughs> and where we was gonna give up about half hour ago, it seems that where the sun's gone in, it's harder to spot them, but it's easier to catch them. So this may be the end, but I'm gonna keep going till dark now. <laughs> Look at that. What an absolutely awesome creature. I've been so, so frustrated throughout the day watching them just ignore my baits and suck it in and spit it out again but it's all worth it look at that from the brink of defeat and from the end of the feature we've had them two wicked <laughs> <laughs>